Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Regular Citicom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with AMD, specifically information regarding to the availability of AMD powered systems. Now, if you were to look at retailers, for example, Amazon and other online stores, you will notice that consistently AMD processors are selling fairly well, competing rather favorably against Intel processors of the same price point. But there has been an alarming shortage of AMD desktops and AMD laptops compared to Intel. So what gives? Why is there an inconsistency there? Well, according to James Pryor from AMD, it has got to do with the supply chain and actually producing enough processors to meet the demand. According to AMD's own data, they are reaching around 40% of the CPUs sold in large mail order companies. So, for example, the Amazons and so on of the world. This information does appear to be backed up by motherboard vendors as well, who are telling us that around 30 motherboards are sold compared to every 70 Intel motherboards are sold. So according to Heist.de at least and their information, the good news is that AMD will continue to ramp up production of these processes to start meeting the demand of laptops and other such devices. According to Heist.de, AMD will continue to ramp up production of processes to meet the demands for these type of devices. But it is important for us to realize that the number of processes sold by AMD is only around 5 million. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not taking away anything away from the company, that's still impressive, and certainly putting a dent on Intel's numbers. But if you compare that to the amount of computers sold worldwide, there were around 260 million computers sold last year alone. So if you to compare 260 million versus 5 million, obviously there's quite a discrepancy there. But AMD are here to play, and I do feel that over the next couple of generations, AMD will start to gobble up more market share from Intel. It's also important for us to realize that when it comes to computers, it's not necessarily that AMD needs to gain all the market share today. In fact, one of the target uh, markets that AMD are doubtlessly pursuing right now is the data center, which is extremely lucrative. And I do feel that once they can get the production numbers up, and they can start to strike more deals with large companies, and they already are striking deals with large OEMs already. But as those continue to come in, without a question, AMD's product line is going to start to sell considerably more, and that's obviously good for their market share. Continuing on the theme of AMD, there is also a CompuBench leak of the Ryzen 2800H. Now this, of course, is a mobile-focused part and does indeed include a Vega 11 GPU. The Ryzen 7 2800H is a 35 watt part, 4 cores, 8 threads, and it appears to be clocked at 3.4 gigahertz of base. The turbo clock right now at least is unknown, and once again because it has a Vega uh, 11, it has 704 shaders. So it should be roughly in line with um, the Ryzen 3 2200G, at least in terms of the graphics performance. Apple have yet another piece of bad news on the horizon, and this could uh, start impacting the company with the new iPhones which are set to release by 2020. According to the Israeli website SeaTech, Apple are planning to ditch Intel for use of the modems in their iPhones, and instead will use the other companies such as MediaTek to provide them with such solutions. According to SeaTech, Sunny Peak, which was the project that has been worked on by Intel on behalf of Apple for their modems, has now been basically put on hold. And instead, the engineers are now working on other projects rather than being asked to improve the design for future iPhones. MediaTek has also been confirmed by Bloomberg to be asked by Apple to produce the modems for their phones. And it actually gets worse because Apple are also looking to produce its own processors for their Macintosh line of computers. And they are planning to make this switch as early as 2020. So that essentially means that Apple are ditching Intel on two fronts, not just one. It's not been a very good time for Apple recently, obviously with the resignation slash firing slash whatever you want to call it of the CEO and other uh, things such as the security issues of the processors, their stocks have certainly taken a hit. I do feel though over the long period, of course, they will start to rebound, but at least in the short term, it's not a good look for the company. 
And finally, I want to discuss an article which is doing the rounds at the moment from 3dcenter.org, which is a pretty reputable website, at least in my personal opinion. And it is going further on the details that we had just yesterday from the website Laptop Media concerning the GTX 1160. Just in case you missed it, the 1160 is going to be utilizing GDDR5 and 6 gigabytes of memory to power laptops. Now, of course, there is a couple of caveats there. The first is it is a laptop, so that's an important thing to distinguish. And the second is that this information could be inaccurate for one way or another. It could be that it just is one variant of the laptop. It could be that this information has just been reported incorrectly. It could be a typo. It could be a dozen different things. But anyway, 3dcenter.org has uh, also chimed in with a few reports and going through a, a few of their sources as well. And it claims that the next generation of GeForce graphics cards, once again, we're presuming that's going to be Turing, although we don't know too much about the architecture underlying Turing. They also claim that they believe that the GTX 11 series will not have a large difference in memory capacity compared to the previous generation of graphics cards. Allow me to explain further. So let's take the GTX 1080 right now. It has eight gigabytes of memory, right? Of course, it's using GDDR5 and all, uh, sorry, GDDR5X and all of that stuff, but it does have eight gigabytes of memory. They believe that the 1180 will actually have eight gigabytes of memory as well. And it will most likely be on the same bus width as we currently have. So of course that makes sense given it's eight gigabytes of memory. So that will be a 256 bit bus eight gigabytes of memory, and we can presume it's going to be using 14 GBPS of GDDR6. I know I'm going to bring it up once again, but you might recall the prototype board. Now that prototype board has not been officially confirmed, of course, of what it actually is, but more and more evidence seems to appear that it is not the GTX 1180. Instead, it is going to be a board for the GT102. Now, the GT102, of course, would essentially mean that this would be a TI slash TI based card. If we are looking at a board which is meant for the same performance tier as the GTX 1080 TI, then we can presume that the memory layout will also be very similar. And once again, the prototype board has 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, and we know that it's got a 384 bit memory bus. We can therefore say that the uh, 1180 Ti will have a similar configuration, um, and of course that means that in theory at least, if we continue to go down the performance tiers, the GTX 1180 will have just a 256-bit bus once again, and GDDR6, and all the other specs that I've just mentioned a second ago. So is that necessarily a bad thing? It will have at least 40% additional memory bandwidth compared to a base GTX 1080. Remember that the standard 1080 has 10 GBPS memory modules, and from what we can understand, the 1180 will launch with 14 GBPS. Of course, faster uh, GDDR6 memory will come over the next several months, but at least initially we'll be looking at 14 GBPS modules. So we can immediately say, well, gosh, if we do the math, that means we've got 40% additional memory bandwidth, and let's assume that we will also have additional improvements in bandwidth efficiency and all that stuff. So therefore we can make a rough presumption that the GTX 1180 will have roughly 50 to 60% additional performance compared to that of the current GTX 1080. Therefore, we can roughly say that the GTX 1180 will be roughly on par, obviously it's probably going to be a little faster, than let's say the GTX uh, 1080 Ti. And that's essentially what they are claiming in this article. Do I think that these numbers are accurate? Or honestly, it's really hard to know because we don't have enough information regarding even what the architecture is yet. And we don't know, of course, know whether the numbers that we've got, even with the uh, laptop media website are accurate, but assuming they are, and that's a big assumption, I wouldn't be surprised if we do see about a 50% bump in performance. My personal money is if the numbers are accurate, we're going to be looking around 50 or 60%. That may disappoint some people, but that's still an awful lot of performance. In theory, that should be enough to play most games at 4K at 60 FPS. Of course, what the next 
um, performance tier. In other words, the 1180 Ti is going to be capable of. You and I can only just guess. I certainly wouldn't be surprised if it's pretty much on par with a Titan V, but once again, that's a guess. With all of that said, that's I think enough for NVIDIA. And what I mean by that is there's not enough pressure from AMD to really counter for more. And then what they can do later this, uh, later next year, if they so desire, or later, so the latter part of uh, next year, they could shrink down to 7 nm and that could be a refresh. And then they can wait and counter Intel if Intel come out really swinging with whatever GPU they're working on. I mean, obviously we know a few basic details of of uh, Arctic Sound, but not enough to know what performance tier it's gonna be in. And if they feel, okay, well, AMD are a threat, or okay, well, uh, Intel are a threat, they can then release a new GPU architecture then and really tweak it and get an, as much out of it as possible. Of course, that's just a theory. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.